Okay, cool. So um, my name is Stephanie Veras, and oh gosh, that's kind of loud. Is that loud? <laughs> and um, so today uh, I'm going to talk to you about basically our first year of data innovation at Lumentum. I'm kind of super informal, so you know, uh, if you have a question, you know, we can you can uh, save it to the end, or you could ask, you know, if it's uh, really bothering you. <laughs> but um, and I did take my little notes to make sure that I hit everything that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so um, basically, uh, Lumentum, at Lumentum we make light-based products. We make everything from lasers to commercial wafers that um, go into consumer electronics. And so, and my background actually is in software and firmware. I wrote math algorithms for five years, firmware for seven, and then got into the supply chain with um, data analytics and manufacturing. So today I'm gonna be talking about really our manufacturing process. And we kind of broke the talk into three areas. Basically, um, what we did is like kind of the first section, how we did it, and what's next on the horizon. And I know this is kind of cheesy, but I really honestly have the best job in the world because I get to help really smart people look at their data differently. So that's a lot of fun. So this was our first year. So we actually started a year ago. I've been at Lumentum for I joined actually a year ago. <laughs> and so um, when we first started, you know, the data, we had a lot of data, like a lot of companies, but we weren't using it effectively. Reports were hidden, they were manual, and um, they were expressing inconsistent metrics. And it was kind of funny with the keynote speakers today, like you kind of heard some of those same vibes, and I don't know if you guys share that same experience. But um, for us, you really had to attend the right meeting or know the right person to understand what was going on in the supply chain and manufacturing floor. And so, but that wasn't intentional, right? Like, it, what drove that behavior was our data landscape. You know, we have four distinct business use, units with very different product sets, right? We are global. We have eight manufacturing sites. Um, and we have 30 and beyond different data sources, right? All the way from Excel and to AWS. So various states of maturity across the board. And um, really the only common point when we started was uh, the pain points, right? Um, everyone was kind of frustrated, didn't know where the data was, all that good stuff. So Lumentum hired their uh, first data scientist, which was me, which was exciting. <laughs> And so this is kind of um, what we did to usher in the new era of data. Uh, we, we really did three things. Uh, the first thing I did was I blew up their metrics, which um, was hard, right? Change is always hard. But um, we said we're going to set a corporate standard that when we look at yield, we're looking at the um, critical pieces of manufacturing and those units coming in and out, right? And any unit that requires retest, rework, or scrap will count negatively. Previously, they were calculating it with like, oh, just the first time through and never looking at the third, fourth, tenth pass, right? Or, oh, you know, I just reworked it. I didn't have to scrap it. That won't impact my yield negatively. Well, wrong, right? So I um, had a little bit of heartburn. So the first thing I did was blow up the metrics, and then we connected the dots, right? So from engineer to executive, and you can see here, our executive has have the quick pulse, right? Because they don't need to spend their time in the details. And then your business leads will have a little bit more granular view, all the way to the engineering people that need the underlying data. And kind of the unique thing about us is we built it from the ground up, which we'll get to in a second. So we're able to take a unit serial number level and aggregate it all the way up to the top and then be able to deconstruct it on the fly, which is super huge, right? And then the other piece that we did was we gave people really a prioritized list, right, of what they needed to work on to help the metric improve. And then, so this is really our impact of change. I'll let you read this, but I wanna highlight two really important things. One of them being access, right? So before Tableau, you had to know which SharePoint, which person, which email, desktop, blah, blah, blah. So now you have a single source, right, which is, um, really amazing. And also because, remember, we have such different levels of maturity in our data, and Tableau doesn't care about it, right? I can take an Excel file, I can connect to AWS, but I can give my users a um, complete 
and seamless user experience, right? So they don't have to worry about the ugliness underneath, right? That's kind of my job and our data stewards. And then also the second thing that really changed was time. So we used to spend a lot of time generating a number and today we work on improving that number. And actually we have, um, I have one little example of um, one of our customers that um, were, they were kind of angry at us and what they were doing was they were taking pictures of a rework pile on the manufacturing floor. And they went to my VP and CQO and uh, they're like, these old reports are saying 90%, like that's not my reality, it's not what I'm experiencing. And so my boss went to, to and we use Tableau Online by the way, went to Tableau Online, navigated to that customer site and was like, yeah, no, I think your yield is nine, right? And so he was like, yes, thank you. He was so excited because finally his reality matched the report that people were giving him. So then the conversation got to change. Right? And we talked about what we were going to do to improve that 9%. And then we're actually going to look at that in a minute and um, have a discussion of action owner timeline instead of arguing about the number. Right, So now we're all kind of changing gears and driving towards that number. So and in this first part, we're just looking kind of at the work product. So um, when you know we built everything, and so how do you change the um, user experience? How do you get your employees to embrace Tableau and this new way of looking at data? Well, you know, kind of naively and simply put, we just made it really easy for them, right? So um, basically, taking away all the manual work of doing the reports was huge, right? So now they have more time, and then we uh, hosted boot up sessions. And so that's where, you know, I would come in their groups and, you know, walk them through the visualizations. And they're like, you know, Stephanie, I mean, that's great, but I need to change X, Y, and Z. Okay, great, let's do it. Let's do it on the fly and make it the standard, right? Let me show you how to do it. And so we are developing our culture. Um, we also hosted Tableau Days where our friends at Tableau would come in and help us get people excited. We did rapid development, and then, like, the next day we did a show and tell. So that was a lot of fun. And, um, I think highly successful. And then um, we made, we architected our site. So we have this one thing, it's to the top left, we had a content map that on the left, it's like a table of index, right? And you can click on it and it pops up the workbook on the right. So you can kind of see like, okay, well I wanna look at Datacom, well boom, you know, and then it pops up and you can see it and play around with it. So that was, so that really, really, really helps people a lot. And actually that was one of our, um, most visited <laughs> workbooks for a while. And then I told people, oh goodness, you know, you can like now bookmark it. So then that kind of got exciting. And then the other thing we did was uh, we made a standard, right? So every visualization that's certified that people are using to do their job has an embedded user's guide saying this is what this is telling you, this is how to do it. If you have questions, contact, you know, X, Y, Z, right? We also, um, uh, so that was really our user piece. And we monitor it and we extend it continuously, actually. <laughs> and then, um, so that is that. So now, that, that was what we did. And we'll look a little bit more into that. But now, um, let's talk about how we developed it. And um, for us, it really took uh, three levels of discipline, right? And it all started with a common goal. So we were lucky in a sense, our executives and um, our CQO said, I want to measure yield. I, and actually, he'll, we'll look at this too, um, it's gonna be tied to everybody's bonus in the company, right? So if you don't meet your yield targets, you, your bonus shrinks. If you exceed your yield targets, it grows, right? So we had a clear objective from um, an executive sponsor, right? So no questions asked, asked. And we had that corporate standard, remember, at the beginning that we were going to measure yield in one way, one way only, no deviation. And so um, the way we started to build out really that data set was we took a tool expert, someone like myself, right, that can help people take their raw data and transform it into uh, a visualization that will drive action. Right? You have your SMEs, your subject matter experts who know the product, know the process. I know nothing about optics, right? My background is in engineering and um, computer science. And so um, I can't tell you what our products do, but <laughs> these guys can. <laughs> 
And um, so we, uh, you know, use the SME to put that product and process into context, and they put that data into context with us. And more importantly, they're on the hook for improving it, right? So um, they have a real stake in the game. And then the third piece of this is we need our data stewards, right? Our friends in IT, our friends in test who generate and land that data for us. And so really the beauty of having that cross-functional team is with conversations, you kind of demystify each other's roles a little bit, and then all of a sudden you have all these different organizations driving to that one common goal that's gonna impact all of our checkbooks, right? <laughs> and so, but you know, it is critical to um, have engagement from all three pieces. If you're missing a piece, um, it's gonna be tough, you know? So, not impossible, but tough. And then um, let's talk a little bit about what you have to have, what we had to have to um, really develop it and scale, right? So we use Tableau Online, right? And we have those three key people, the data steward, the SME, and the tool expert. And um, we kind of work as a small little team at first and then uh, digest the data, understand the data, sit together, produce data, and then, um, We'd really share it with the wider audience, the red piece there. And all in the goal to make it automated and to dig deeper. And so we're constantly plugging ourselves back into this continuum and moving back and forth, right, as we mature as a company. And so this is a piece that's really important to us. <laughs> and you have to um, kind of wake up every morning with, the, um, with a positive attitude. <laughs> I went too far. So yeah, so um, another piece that um, is really important to talk about is how do you um, move the needle? And for us, fortunately, our data team and our KPO team, our Kaizen Promotion Office, are under the same management. And so Kaizen is just a um, Japanese word for improvement. And so our Kaizen team you know, works on various activities to just constantly improve our business. And they, it's, it's it's unique in the fact that it works all the way from our CEO down to the individual operator on the line, right? And so what you see here is this is one of our yield pieces, and uh, they identified an issue, right? And then they, uh, the Kaizen team worked uh, PDCA methodology, and you can see it in the A3 down there, and really just kept hammering it and going back over and over again that circle of you know plan do act adjust and um, until they extinguish the defect right and then the other piece that was crucial is you see in number three we knew when we cut that change in we knew when it was going to hit the manufacturing floor and we could measure it we were expecting that bump right and so that's really um, kind of where the magic is, because now I can go back to that customer that was really angry about his 9% yield, and this is the kind of conversation I can have. So instead of just saying, oh, it's fine, I know what I'm doing, it's 90%, I can say, I have work to do, I understand the work I need to do, and this is how we're gonna do it and measure it, and you can uh, have accountability, right? And so that, that's really where the rubber meets the road for us. And so, in a year of runway and um, a lot of hard work, we actually were able to cover 80% of our revenue generating products across our portfolio. We actually did have double digit yield improvements and you'll notice a lot of those start with a two, right? That's very exciting for us. Um, we also opened up our, we used the Tableau online and so we were able to open up to our CMs, right? So our contract manufacturers we were able to open up to our customers and let them see their data, right? And, and see the type of visualizations like on the last page, what we were looking at, so they can go in and monitor and play. And you know, I did one customer presentation and they were so happy with the direction and everything, one lady hugged me, <laughs> so. <laughs> like it, it, it's really amazing how it changes the dynamic and your conversation. And then, like I said, so our quality metrics are tied to our bonus. And then um, our first year, goal setting was hard, right? We started with nothing. We started with no consistency. 
So we had a tops down peanut butter, everybody imp improved 5%, period, right? Okay, well, some people, you know, could do better, some people could do worse, you know, and so now what we're doing is we're starting to use statistical models and to help us look at entitlement, right? So we look across testers, right? Do I have a stinky tester that, like, needs to be taken down and reworked, you know, that's causing my yield to tank? And that's what's on this right-hand side is our different testers. And basically the top blue one is our reference tester. So he's doing really good at great volume. And then we uh, derive confidence intervals for every single tester for that operation. And the orange ones are the ones that are uh, statistically different. There is something wrong with that tester. It is special cause. So we say, you know what, guys, go fix that. And I think, you know, close the gap, get to 80% of your gap. Your new goal is 79, right? So first year, kind of peanut butter, not so great. Now we're kind of becoming more sophisticated and um, really driving to what we know we can accomplish. So that was the first part and the second part. And then, oh, I, oh, I did that already, good. <laughs> okay, so um, with all that said, with all the yield reporting, and we actually also did um, RMA turnaround time, which is our customers actually can send us back product, and we grade ourselves on how quickly we can do that turn and get it back to them. So. Um, we stood all that up, but in the same time, we had um, a lot of other needs that needed to be met. So the top two are examples of our wafer modeling. So I'm able to actually connect to the live data and physically show on the wafer where defects are happening, right? Um, it's great. Oh, he needs help. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we can see where defects are happening, right? And so this is huge for us, right? And we did these kind of little fun um, circle cutting, right? So if I take off the outside of the wafer, what does that mean for my Pareto? Well, you can see the one to the right, I go five levels deep. I've extinguished my second Pareto item by over 80%, right? So I know now where physically this is happening. I can ask those kinds of questions, right? Um, Data-driven alerts. So like I said, we open it up to our CMs. Um, one thing that we uh, really look at with, with our CMs is idle time for test stations. So I'm actually able to measure our active test time. And um, we have contracts and stuff and agreements saying that like, you know, thou shall use the, you know, have the tester up and running X amount of time. Well, I can color that red, new, green. <laughs> and so those poor guys, <laughs> they love me. <laughs> they get an email now saying that like, hey, your tester XYZ on day ABC was not in use, why? Tell me. Like, you, it, and it's amazing how the conversation really, really changes. We also put data-driven alerts around parametric values, um, yield loss. We, we started with the SPC controls. We looked at the bad tester a minute ago. And then another thing that we look at are tool interactions, right, in our workflow process. So with all that said, you know, what's next for us? So this is what we were able to do in one year with a small team of people, right? And um, we're very proud of it, but we want more, like everyone, right? And so our plan is to scale. We want to make everybody super happy and love data and have a conversation with their data to drive to those goals, right? We want to go tackle harder problems. We want to do more advanced analytics, right? And then. Um, and actually to the right, those are all of our users. And what we have this one visualization that you can look at and see who's a guru, right? So somebody that comes to the site a lot, looks at it, interacts with the data, right? All the way down to like a, a viewer type role, someone that occasionally goes in and maybe doesn't download data. And so you can look at that across different workbooks. So if you have a question about a workbook, you can reach out to a friend, right? And actually the, the funnier part about it is our um, CEO, <laughs> And um, CQO are always <laughs> friends on most of the workbooks. But um, that's really our story. So I kind of went through that a little bit fast, I guess. I don't know what time it is. But yeah, so now I just kind of want to open it up for questions. And um, if anyone had any comments, concerns, or, oh, yeah. Um, 
It was all employees that are eligible for the bonus. It's a quality multiplier, yeah. So actually now we're restructuring so that we are, remember we had four business units. So the way I built it, we can roll up a yield number for each of those four business units. So if one business unit does really well, we can reward that business unit. If one stinks, we can you know, punish that one, right? <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's a really good motivator. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Oh, yeah. No, we were lucky. So um, we had executive buy-in from the start. I actually came from another company that we didn't have executive buy-in, and it was a much harder dynamic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'd love to talk to you about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so the question was if we wanted people that only wanted rows of tables instead of like a, a visualization, right? And yes, so um, it, it's interesting because um, usually like when you come in and you do the visualization, you get the oohs and the ahs and all that stuff, but then some people really want that table. So I give it to them, right? I'm like, okay, here's your table. I said, I'll give you your table, but you have to let me sit with you and show you something else. Right? So I give them the table, they're happy, and then I keep going back, and I'm like, hey, what if we looked at it this way? And I start asking them questions, and then if they don't have concrete heads, right, that you're never gonna get through, they'll turn. But, you know, some people do have concrete heads, you know, and you just kinda have to know, and, you know, you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna make any way, you know, progress there, but, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, actually, our lasers, <laughs> they built and rework into their process, right? So their yield <laughs> is effectively always zero, right? Um, so. That's okay though, you are where you are, right? But we are going to calculate it in this way. And so we came up with this thing called a health index. So um, basically it's an index, right, from zero to 100. And we just say, hey, you know, the first year just, you gotta do 5%, right? And so, but even if you uh, get to the 5%, um, the, what's gonna roll up at the beginning to our management and our board are, is the one on the left, right? So it, it's a number from zero to one. So I kind of insulate them a little bit from showing like really terrible yield that they have, but they can show um, traction to their goal, right? But yeah, no, and you know, optics is funny. Like, you know, it's like, it, 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 it <laughs> you know, it, it, there's a lot of people that want to calculate it one way and uh, really breaking through that and, um, saying why, you know, and having that conversation and taking time because, you know, some people, you know, they just, you know, um, it, it's a hard conversation. But, you know, at, I actually had this the other day. Um, a guy was saying, oh, he only thinks he has a 3% uh, yield loss. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's 20. And he was like, yeah, yeah, but I fixed it real quick. I was like, okay, well, why is it breaking? He's like, oh. Well, there might be contamination. I was like, okay, so let's talk about that, <laughs> right? And then you can have like a normal conversation about it. But yeah, no, you know. But thank you. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, so. I first had to find the data, right? So um, with our KPO team, they look across our, and that's, the, so I'm in quality, so that's the interesting piece. You look across the whole company, right? And so, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we have like, so my bosses were able to point me to the right direction, and then so, you know, the first time around, you're like, hey, you know, I need to know about your yield data. Well, what does that mean, right? So I have like this little standard deck. It's like, it's like you gave me three pieces of the data, I can tell you this. You gave me four pieces of the data, I can tell you that. And so you start having that kind of conversation. 
And then, um, so you have to find the data first, right? And you have to accept that you're gonna be at various levels of maturity, right? And the nice thing about Tableau is um, the end user experience is, is, you know, kind of insulated against that, right? So I'm able to, you know, take those Excel files that are being emailed from the CM, right? And just kind of do a little bit of extra work on my, because my background's in software, I have a little Linux box that just churns through it, right? And so, but at the same time, I say, hey, data stewards, friends in IT, I'm giving you a little bit of runway. I need you to land this data in this way, in this location, properly, right? But then it, with the executive support, it's, it's helpful, right? Because I can escalate. But um, you have to find it. You have to accept it's not going to be perfect. You have to try to bridge the gap, but then really put those, and that's what we're doing this year. We're really putting those pieces in place to do it in an elegant solution that's scalable and sustainable, right? And any new piece of data, I'm like, uh-uh, no, we don't do it that way. <laughs> you know, like, no, thank you. And so um, you either love me or hate me, you know, but we're pretty strict on it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. What's your biggest hurdle in this process? Was it data size, time size, or any design size? Um, it, each had their own, right? Like, so the data side, like finding it, right? And finding the right grain, right? Because the other thing, too, the other, and um, we really started at zero, right? And so um, being able to identify the data, and what I had to do was I w I'm reading a lot from like MES systems, like shop floor and test systems to be able to understand the signal and all that stuff. So that had its own complexity, right? But it's okay. The buy-in, it, it, the buy-in came, right? Because people, the people that um, wanted to do a good job and actually excelled and are doing a good job, you know, embraced it, right? They're like, how do I do this? Let me, you know, do some web authoring, all that good stuff. And then the design, we kind of came up with a standard, and then um, that became the base level. And then when we help our users kind of get onboarded with our boot up sessions, I sit with them and I'm like, what else do you need to do your job, right? And then so we just kind of sit for an hour, hour chunks at a time, and develop out what they need, right? What would be your different initiatives? Um, <laughs> probably document where everything is better. <laughs> and um, you know, we had a pretty good first year. I mean, what would you, would y'all guys do anything differently? Or I mean, yeah, I mean, our first our first quality multiplier increased our bonus. So you know, like the what? Yeah, our adoption within our company is great. I mean, our CEO loves it. So one, one really fun example that I, I meant to talk about, but I didn't. Um, for our wafers, uh, you know, I built this one thing where I stacked up all the testers, right, against each other, and you could see their yields and their Pareto item. So Alan, our CEO, looks at it, calls the SME, and it's like, hey, <laughs> why is tester XYZ failing, you know, 10% more than his friends, and why is it for wavelength? Right? And so the poor SME, right, you know, okay, he had a heart check. And then, um, but that's a very different conversation and the transparency that's there, you know, your management, the executives love it, but the individual contributor loves it because they know clearly what they need to go work on, right? They're just like, just tell me, like, I, I wanna do something, but I don't know how. And that's where we partner with the Kaizen team and we have all those Kaizen activities to really you know, what we call pokey yoke is, you know, error proof and make it you know, idiot proof so my mom can do it. No, kidding. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, no, um, each one had its own challenges. And um, I, I, yeah, I'd say like, I just, I'm, I always, I'm so impatient. I want to do it faster. So yeah, maybe faster. Yes. But finding that one thing that you think will just wow that DSO or the lowest one that you've actually answered that question and getting their attention that way might help with the sponsorship. Yeah, no, we, we, we <laughs> had a former life and um, we actually, we were struggling with our executive sponsorship. This was at another company. 
Um, that actually site was out for 18 years. Um, and we, had, we were really struggling with uh, getting traction and adoption. And so I actually went and uh, said, hey, you know, we're going to host a Tableau Day. What questions do you want to answer, Mr. Executive, Mrs. Executive, right? What, what, what can no one answer for you? And then Mary Beth came and helped us out. And I think that was three days. It was like, yeah, we had a workshop. We answered all the questions. And they were like, oh, wow, that's powerful. Because time to value is huge. I mean, you know, being able to take all these different data sets, I don't care what they look like, uh, and, and give an answer and make it unified, um, that, that's really attractive, right? And then also, um, we did, uh, I started to quantify how much time I was saving with report generation. So I was like, I'm extinguishing this report, that report, this report, that's freeing up X amount of headcount, right? Tying it to dollars. First pass yields a little bit, well actually, de de defective parts per million is easier because of your scrap cost, right? You can directly associate your scrap costs and say like, if I improve my DBPM, I'm gonna improve this much dollar wise. First pass yield, you can tie it to cycle time. Lot lots of, um, revenue generating or revenue saving um, items. So by putting the dollar amount in there, that really kind of catches their eye as well. Do you think? Yeah. Anyone else have questions? I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and even at the other company, it was so funny because uh, it, was, it was a really big company. And um, the, it, it, people just couldn't understand with all the different sites. And so one of the things I did was I threw volume on top of the yield because, you know, first pass yield is a very volume-driven metric. If you have um, big numbers that are going through a certain site or a certain product, when you roll it up, it, you kind of lose it. But when you aggregate it out to where people in the organization fall naturally. Like, so I showed where test was impacting yield. I showed where sites were impacting yield. I showed where products were impacting yield. And I just threw like this size on the bubble, on the circle and made them into bubbles. And like people just gasp. And they were like, this is amazing. And I was like, go fix the big red bubbles, right? That's very simple, <laughs> right? And so, but people loved it, right? I mean, they're just like, this is amazing. I can go, like, which red bubble's mine? I'll go fix it, right? And then, by the way, with that time thing, with the one, two, three, one, um, I want to know when you're cutting it in. I'm going to measure it. And if you don't get it done, you're, you're going to have to explain that, right? Maybe it would be a detractor, but, you know, we'll talk about it. Oh, yep. Yeah. The, um, the, the contest is not feasible. Yeah. Sure, yeah, no. So uh, the content map is really like um, on one side, it's like a table of contents, right? So it's like our business units, right? So datacom, telecom, lasers. And then under it, it throws out to the sites, and you can even go more, so it's like a nested hierarchy. And then um, all the little bubbles are a little action, and so it launches a, um, to the right-hand side, I have a blank URL page, and when you click on the bubble, it passes the URL to the other side that's waiting to listen to it, that I just said, you know, just show this filter of the URL. And um, it presents it in the little thumbnails. So you can go click, click, click. Like, I think I saw that one thing in a meeting. I want to find it again. And you go click, click, click. And then you look at it to the right, find where you want to go. And then you right click and launch it, right? So it really gave people a, um, a map. And the other piece, and actually, <laughs> my CQO called me. He, he looked at it before it was ready and was uh, very angry about the um, user experience. And uh, so it, we're very big on standardization. Everything is spelled out. I don't use acronyms a lot. And um, their user's guide literally embedded in every single one of our certified visualization that counts towards our bonus, right? So you can see how yield is being measured. You can see how I set your goal. You can see how to interact with it and what first key level takeaways you should get from it. 
And, um, but then, you know, it's up to you to kind of explore it a little bit more. But really having that content map where you can click a subject that you want, get a preview, be like, is that where I want to go? Okay, let's go, right? And then really standardizing around the user's guide embedded in the workbooks, right? And that's just a picture, right? So I do it in PowerPoint, I take a snippet, and I stick it in there, right? Did that help? Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyone else have a question or thought? Concern. Oh, buy please. Can you talk about the executive buy in and on the worker fee side? One of the things we're starting to see is that people, as you commented, people have to know what they need to pay to receive the yeah. payment side of it. We're now seeing that it's a benefit to them because they can show that they can demonstrate that they've made that improvement. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and you can put that in your performance review, right? And it's something measurable, you can point to it. And then, yeah, no, so it's, it's very empowering. I think that's the, like, it's, it's amazing how empowering people can become, right? And so that's where we're at this year, right? So they didn't know what Tableau was, really, and so we kind of gave it to them and, like, stood up basics and um, all that good stuff, and now they're starting to explore. And we have a couple of people that we really, um, want to help and, and love on and mature. And so we actually have developer meetings every Tuesday or every other Tuesday. And like, we're just like, bring me, you know, your problems and we'll work through it. And then what we're going to start up is, um, well, actually what we do have is uh, office hours. So you can just bring me your biggest problem and we'll work through it right on the fly. So that's actually, um, it's very, it's very liberating. Yeah. So thank you. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Is this exciting, helpful? You can do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. You also had a slide related to Kaizen projects. In this Walden system, do you have a standardized zoning system or all these different entities are capped in that information very differently? Because the Kaizen stuff is a powerful Kaizen sheet. Oh, that one? Yeah. So, um, so I think I hear two questions there. So we are still building our quality system. So the first year, I have to, no I, I had no information. So I had to accept, like, I'm going to have various levels of maturity, right? So we have, like, one sector of our business, everything is in AWS. It was like, you know, your Christmas candy buffet. They weren't using it, right? And I was just like, how are y'all not using this data? <laughs> and so we had that, you know, uh, in AWS, you know, very mature, structured. It's not a part of production, right? So I have some people that are like, hey, yeah, no, just plug into the production server. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that's a terrible idea. And um, so we, right now, we, we, we've identified it, we've measured it the same way, and we're um, giving our users that seamless interface. And then this year, we're really working to define that quality system, make that quality system, get all the like kind of um, Excel-based people into uh, with an API, right, towards our quality system to be able to land that data. But the beautiful thing about it is that our users will never know right, because they have that same user interface. They don't know what I'm doing on the back end to change the data. They know, like, if the volumes look funny or something like that, but I don't have to retrain them on the visualizations or anything. That I, I just stood it, I, I accepted where we were, I you know, took one for the team, you know, we stood it up, give our data stewards the time to build it correctly and hold them to it, right? It's like, you have to build this correctly and land this data in this certain way at this level of granularity. Because a lot of times people will be like, oh, I gave you an aggregate number. I'm like, I can't do anything with that, right? So, um, and then your question about Kaizen for our Kaizen piece. Yeah. So you were saying how many subjects you have to know that you wanted in the quality side. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, yep. Sure. No, so I have, a, so it's, it varies, right? So I have AWS, I plug, I actually plug into the MES system, I plug into our test servers. Um, I have one CM that just wants to FTP me things, so I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And so um, I have my little Linux box, and so I go, and I have a cron job that goes and reaps those files, sucks it in, and so I'm gonna push it up with the Tableau REST API, right? So um, I'm a lazy engineer, so I don't have to do manual things. And so I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna automate where I can, right? I have to accept that some things I'm not, they're, they can't be pushed that hard, that quickly, right? So um, give them a little bit and <laughs> now, you know, and, and so it's great, right? So, uh, you know, I was on an email the other day where um, Misha, our CQO, was like, when are you, you know, to this kind of archaic test system gonna be able to measure it the same way as the rest of the company? The rest of the company is doing this. Are you gonna get on board, right? So there's kind of peer pressure, you know. But yeah, no, I'm, you, you have to be lazy. Like you can't, at my other company, it was very, we actually had a quality system that couldn't do goals properly. And so, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me plug into it, so I had to kind of backdoor it. But, you know, it worked out. Any other questions or? Uh huh, please. So, how many people in the data department? Over 30. Over 30 different data departments. Mm hmm. Okay. Did you manage the workload actually yourself? Mm hmm. How did you manage it? So, um, we, so actually, uh, we had to write some Python to be able to, because one of our Excel files that we got was basically a, um, a dashboard in Excel, which is kind of weird, but we had to reverse engineer it down to the base data. But um, yeah, it just depends. So, you know, uh, and it, it's interesting because I kind of, uh, for the ones that um, I am able to automate, I update them twice a day, right? And I have like this little virtual box that runs my bridges and everything. So I use Tableau Bridge a lot to be able to, you know, uh, connect to those um, test servers and MES systems and push the data up. But for the other ones that are still manual, I say, hey, we need to work with the, um, and some of it are our CMs, right? Um, our contract manufacturers. And then I say, hey, you need to land the data in this way. And then I, we work with IT, to, they use Cloudberry to grab it and uh, stick it into AWS. So it's always automating to, and so we wanna go to AWS. Mm-hmm. Okay. With the box? Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll chat. I see. But like if you're looking at the same as you're adding other stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you, for example, if you have a on office like today, you can see our data in Excel on the box. But that data d it isn't being generated in Excel, it's coming from somewhere, right? Really, really Excel. The but where's the base data? In your box folder. Box folder? Okay. No data is supposed to be Excel. But is it, but where, is the, where, does the, where does the Excel get populated from? Are they manually entering it? Is it a cut and paste? Are they, are they manually enter it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
So for us, most of our data, and the first year we did a tester yield, so all of that is coming from a tester, like a source. It's not really being manually updated. So, because um, I got that question, like here's my data, it's in Excel, and so we just say, I want to go back to the source, back to the source. But if it's manual, it's problematic, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you say, uh, I have an outlier, go tell me what happened? Oh, I see, I see, I see. No, Tableau, well, actually, Tableau, I did see one thing where it would do, Kiyoshi showed it to me, um, where it could do a write back to the database. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is right. Yeah. You can, well, you can do like a data, if, you're, if you have some kind of way to identify those outliers, you know, so maybe they're, you know, above a certain yeah, well, threshold, you can get an, a, 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 a data-driven alert, right? Yeah. And then if you do that in like a, with a cross-tab too, right? So, based in there, so. But yeah, 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 no, that's, that's, if it's manual, you have to change that behavior. You know, you, you, for us, we do, we, we make, we, it, it, in manufacturing, you want a cookie cutter, right? So, but yeah, and uh, so, did anyone have any other questions, or, we good? <laughs> well, thank you guys, I really enjoyed the hour. Y'all have fun, and um, be safe. Thank you.